Well, good morning all, and today we are going to continue with the poetry section of the text, First Flight, and we are going to deal with yet another one of Robert Frost's creation titled Fire and the Ice. Now, this poem deals with the idea of the world coming to an end, and how it comes to an end is the question in the poem. There are two groups, one who supports the theory that the earth will get so hot that it will be consumed by fire. The other group says the theory that it's going to get so cold that living, all living organisms are just going to freeze to death. And then in the middle there's Robert Frost, who thinks both the ideas are very much feasible because of human emotions. He gives fire and ice the characteristics of human emotions. Fire, which is there in the title, is connected to human desires, the fiery desires of human, the never-ending wants. And ice is the heat that humans have for each other, the animosity, the prejudice. And those two things have been beautifully combined to represent fire and ice and how the world would ultimately come to an end through any of these two elements. So before we go any further into the explanatory part of the poem, let's just go through the poem first, line by line, Fire and Ice by Robert Frost. Some say the world will end in fire. Some say in ice. From what I have tasted of desire, I hold with those who favor fire. But if I had to perish twice, I think I know enough of heat to say that for destruction, ice is also great and would suffice. So in the first para, which reads, Some say the world will end in fire, some say in ice. From what I have tasted of desire, I hold with those who favor fire. So the poet Robert Frost opens with the line that some people say that the world's gonna end in a huge ball of fire, while others say that it's gonna end in ice. But of what I have tasted of desire, all right, he does not say that your desire. He says, from what I have tasted of desire, not even he is aware of the human desires. He says that it is because of our desire, our never-ending greed that is going to end this world, world in a ball of fire. But then in the very next para, he kind of supports the theory of ice as well. He says that, but if it had to perish twice, if the world had to end two times over, I think I know enough of heat to say that for destruction, ice is also great and would suffice. So in the second line he says, second para he says that if the world had to end twice, there is enough heat in this world. There is enough heat in this world that the world could very much be destroyed by ice as well. So in this way, he tries to justify fire and ice ending the world giving fire the face of desire, the human desire, and ice the face of human heat, all right? In other terms, if we had to translate this quite literally, we can say that it expresses an idea that the world can end in either of the two ways, either by ice or by fire. And in this case, one group is saying that the Earth's core will get so heated up that one day it will lead to a huge fire destroying all of Earth's surface. While on the other hand, another group is saying that if the temperature, that it is very much possible that the temperature is going to go down so much that it will be impossible for any life to remain on Earth. But in both cases, the world is coming to an end. And so in this way, the poet compares fire and ice with the feature of human emotions, or like the destructive future features that we possess, each one of us, me, you, everyone, we all have these 
two destructive features within us and those are desire and hate. We have desire for the good things in life. We have wishes. We have wants. Those are fiery desires. And then we are not perfect human beings after all. We have hate. We have anger. All right. We have prejudice against each other. So those can be related to ice. And so he says, be it by fire, be it by ice. Both are part and parcel of human desires. Or rather, both are part and parcel of human desire and hatred. Desire being fire and hatred being ice. And so he says, whether it be by fire, whether it be by ice, it will have the same end effect. It will lead to the end of the world. So, if given an option between fire and ice, ice would be just as good as fire to destroy the world. In any case, the world's coming to an end. Whether it be by fire or ice, shouldn't really matter in the end. All it should matter is that it is because of human emotions, the greed and the hate we have for each other. So, within a span of eight lines, the poet has beautifully described how human desires and hatred are one of the worst enemies we can harbor within ourselves. So with this, I end today's poem titled Fire and Ice by Robert Frost. Good day.